A Merry Christmas to you and welcome to the Asbury Christmas Eve service. I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us. Tonight we get to celebrate the birth of Christ. So far we've been uh, celebrating Advent and the first Sunday we celebrated hope. We lit the candle of hope, knowing that we can hope in God. It's not a hope for, a wish for, but it is a faith that God is going to do what he said he would do. The next candle we lit was the candle of peace. And we remember not only that Jesus is our peace, but he also brings us peace. He is the one who allows us to live in peace. He says, my peace I give to you, uh, my, my peace I, I leave with you. He wants you to be at peace. Well, the next Sunday we celebrated the candle of joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we got to celebrate the fact that God is so good and he has an ocean of joy that he wants us to drink from deeply. And last Sunday, we celebrated the candle of love. This candle reminds us that God sent his son because he loves us. So this evening, we're going to move through um, the Christmas story. And we are going to talk about why Jesus came. And you're going to hear the songs of Christmas and the scriptures of Christmas and testimonies about the goodness of God and how he comes to us. Because we want to light the, the middle candle tonight. The, the Christ candle. The one that says Jesus came into the world that God is love, that he loves you, that he wants you to know his love, to live out of that love. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be fearful. It's an invitation. Come and know me. I'm praying that as the service goes on, that you will know the love that God has for you. Lord Jesus, we invite you into this time so that we might know your love that is really love, that you would come and meet each person personally. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew 1, 18-24 reads, This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through his prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife.
One of the great things about Christmas is that we get to have greetings from those near and far. We're going to hear a greeting from Bishop Cliff Fletcher, the Bishop of the Free Methodist Church in Canada, and, from, and then from Mayor John Fennick, Mayor of Perth. Hello, Asbury Free Methodist. Uh, I want to say Merry Christmas. It's been quite a year, obviously, and uh, my prayer moving into this next year is just rich, rich time with Jesus, listening to him what he would have for us as church family. So I want to thank you for this past year, for how you've dug in, the way you've dug in, and uh, together we say thank you, Jesus, uh, for your love on us and the hope that you have, because that's how we move into this next year. So Merry Christmas, Asbury. So good afternoon, everybody at the Asbury uh, congregation, the church. This is such uh, an interesting time. We're living in interesting times for sure. Um, we're, we're, we've got COVID on the scene. We do have a vaccine coming. But what I've learned is that throughout this pandemic, God has created people and really shown people to be patient and kind and giving. And if we all stay on that track, then we're all going to be okay. So. From me, the Mayor John Fennick, from the town of Perth, here in the beautiful town of Perth, I wish you all a very happy Christmas and a healthy, prosperous New Year. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went from there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son, she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. I am Jim Casabo, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. In my early teens, I accepted Jesus Christ into my life when I lost my great-grandfather. From then until now, the Lord has been with me through war and peace. Most recently, I have been overwhelmed by the love of God for a poor sinner like me. During the church service of November the 2nd this year, we were listening to a message of Praying the Word of God, based on 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. During the silent time, I confessed my sins 
and acknowledged that I was a sinner. Then in that service, I prayed for relief from pain in my shoulders, arms, and hands due to having arthritis. I had been taking Tylenol every two hours and using a heating pad every evening to get relief without success. After praying for relief, I felt the warm hand brush down my hand and neck and onto my shoulders. Then the feeling went down my arms and into my hands. My prayer was answered, and from that time until now, I have had no pain. I wish that everyone hearing this testimony would take this as truth, that God does answer prayer, and I am an example. May the blessing of Christ be on all of you this Christmas season. The reading of Luke 2, 8 to 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests.
This is the word of the Lord from Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who is lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Welcome to our home. The tree is up. There's Christmas presents under the tree. It's that time of year. It's time of year for generosity, time of year to share with family, although this year has been a little different. And so we come to this year and it's, uh, we're wondering, you know, do we get together with family or do we not? Uh, closure's coming really soon. And so we take a look at life and we say, you know, what do we do? Well, 2,000 years ago, there was a baby born. Jesus is his name. Start of Christmas is that Jesus came. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He sent him so that, that we might know who God is. Jesus is the perfect representation of, of who God is. If you've ever read the scriptures, if you've read uh, the story of Jesus, then you've seen his compassion. You've seen his goodness. You've seen his love. You've seen his, his, his grace. And he wants that same grace and love to be known by you. See, the reason why Jesus came is that he wanted to bring us into a relationship with the God of the universe. He made a way so that we could know God and walk with God and be in fellowship with God, where God could be our friend. Many th people think that that's a weird concept, that God could be our friend. But he has shown himself to be a God of love, a God of compassion, a God full of grace. Yeah, life isn't always fair. Life isn't always kind. But God is always good. We live in a world that's fallen. We live in a world where sin has entered into the world and it has broken the world and has broken us. Sin, you can think of it kind of like a poison, a poison that gets into our souls and it deadens us and it keeps us away from, from good and it promotes a, a, a decay in our souls. Jesus came he said, I want to deal with that sin. Sin gets into our world, and the Bible says creation groans. Sin has a way of, of causing our world to decay. It, it has a way of bringing death into the world. And Jesus came and said, I've come that you might have life. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the light of life. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life is what Jesus said. He comes and he wars against that decay in our souls. What happens is that, well, Jesus comes and he takes our sin and he, puts, he takes our sin and, and he put it upon himself on the cross and he gives us his righteousness, which is his goodness. And and he sucks the poison of sin out of us and he gives us uh, uh, his, his goodness. And what that does, it brings our souls alive. Oh, that doesn't mean that we're perfect or that somehow we're going to uh, uh, float through life easily. But what it does mean is that he connects us with the God of the universe. And the Bible tells us that if, if we're connected with him, if we remain in him and he's in us, 
then, then there's a whole lot of things that go on in our life. You're going to see answered prayer. You're going to see a renewal in your heart. You're going to see joy. You're going to see peace. You're going to see love. Jesus came that you might have life and have it to the full. That's what he wants for you. So in this Christmas, we're reminded about who Jesus is. Old Testament said, unto us a, a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus wants to come to each of us. We're celebrating Christmas as, as uh, remembering history where Jesus came. But what I found about Jesus is that he comes again and again and again. He stands there with, with arms open wide and he says, you know, come to me. I want you to walk into the life that is really life. And so we'll remember at this Christmas that Jesus came. But Jesus is saying, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I'll, I'll come in and, and I'll, I'll have fellowship with him and, and, and they with me. He wants to, us to enter into a relationship with him. It's easy to do that. We say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. He needs an invitation. He does not barge into our life. He does not somehow come and force his way in. He is very much a person who, who is, is there, but he wants an invitation. So we say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. He comes into our, uh, our lives and, and then he deals with the sin that's in our lives. So we say, Lord, for, forgive us of our sin. And he does just that. And he, he takes our sin upon himself. He, he sucks out that poison of soul and, and he gives of his goodness and his life. The Bible says he puts his Holy Spirit in us. And as we start to grow and as we start to learn, we start to see life from his perspective. And, and we pray, Lord, I give my life to you. I'm, I'm going to follow you. That simply means that we're, we're, we're choosing to, to, to work with his perspective and follow his ways. As we follow his ways, what we find is that he knows what is good and what we need. We, we, we live as if we, we know all about what we need, but God knows even better. And he comes to us and he, he gives us his direction. And as we follow him, we find that we, we walk into green pastures and besides still waters, he, he restores our souls. But not only that, we find that, that he gives us the this, this sense of love and peace and joy, real joy, sense of well-being on the inside. And in giving that, what happens is that he gives us what we need for life. You know, over the next little while, we... we are going to have to persevere through a lockdown, but he gives us strength and perseverance. We have hope. We're thankful that God meets us right where we're at. Today I want to invite you into that hope. A hope for life that is really life. A hope that gives us uh, a sense that God is nearby. I would encourage you to invite Jesus into your life saying, come into my life. I give you my life. You're welcome here. Take my sin away, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. I'm going to follow you. As you pray a prayer like that, God hears and answers those kinds of prayers. I want to encourage you on, on this, uh, at this Christmas to follow him, to know him, because he's going to give you what you need to live life well in 2021. Blessings on you and Merry Christmas.
God through the scriptures, that you've been encouraged by the love of God. And my prayer for you is that you would have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. From all of us here at Asbury Free Methodist Church in Perth, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and may God's blessing be yours.